this plus this equals this. Fawson's got a surprise for us tomorrow. All I know is we're going camping. I know that the big bag is mine and the little one is hers. It's not even fair. Look at that. It's like Logan Paul versus Floyd Mayweather. I don't really know what she's got planned. I don't know if we're going to go to one of those super la -di da Mickey Mouse ones with the, the wave pool and the, the sauna. Man, wouldn't complain. We got all of our Amazon gear here primed and ready for its first trip. And we'll just have to see where Fawson's got us planned for tomorrow. That made no sense, but hey. Sometimes things don't make sense, but they make sense, but they don't make sense. Let's go! Good morning. It's time to go wake up Mike. <laughs> oh, fuck. It would appear that we've left about an hour too late. Yep. Early bird gets the win. Yeah, what's early though? Six o'clock. I don't know, man. I don't think Wikipedia defines early as six. Uh -huh. Did you enjoy the driving so far? It's been quite in enjoyable. Three hours later. Our first stop in Cisteron, an absolute fantastic, fantastic village. I had absolutely no clue where Fosting was bringing us this day. I thought we were going into the Vale though. Being a little bit of a grumpy bitch. Actually, no, I was being a big grumpy bitch in the morning on the way there. So I'm going to apologize to Fossine for that and to you, our viewers. So you're not going to see so much of uh, the chit chat in the car as it was at a minimal because I had something up my ass. Now, looking at Cistro, it's an absolute fantastic town just on the edge of the Alps. You can see there's some pretty gorgeous real estate previously owned by Tywin Lannister, one of his many assets of the Lannister family. Look at that thing up there. Yeah, I'm not even kidding, man. This was the, this was, this belonged to him, yeah? Tyrion, you know, didn't get it because, anyway. So yeah, this was our first stop before we moved on to the Gorge de Meul, Mejul, Mejul, Meuge, for you, thank you, Faustine. And yeah, absolute stunning. Off to our next stop we went. On me. What is a take on me? So our second stop on our Faustine surprise adventure was at Les Gorges de la Meuge for a nice 37 degree hike. Hmm, who doesn't appreciate a nice 37 degree hike? Absolute stunning area. Nobody on the paths. We had the whole place basically to ourselves, with the exception of a few swimmers. A fantastic afternoon bringing us into our happy hour. It was way too hot, so we decided to go to town, put some gas, necessary gas. I'm laughing, but I'm not laughing at the price. The price is really high, but welcome to France. It looks like I'm a donkey this time. Yeah, fair enough for once. Look at that spot we find for our apéro. Pretty epic. The Gorge de la Méouge. Oh, and look at Mr. Piggy here. Enjoying that? So that's it, we decided to go up the mountain for our little bivouac. This is typical French roads when you go up the mountain. So this is not for the, how do you say that in English? The faint of heart. Faint of heart. Oh, do you see the big hairs? Yep. You saw them. But you can see wild animals and that's pretty rare in Europe. Yo, I that's can tell fucking you that. rare, I've never seen those. No. Ever. So we'll see what waiting for us at the end of the road and I'm pretty sure it's gonna be pretty epic. Oh yeah. We're getting close. You know what's funny? The this road is getting shittier, the wind is blowing, it's only 24 degrees. Fuck no, you scared of me. You happy with the camping spot? That's absolutely epic. For everybody who wants to plan shit like this, get to know Google Earth. That's all the directions you need is your brain and Google Earth. You figure it out. Let's go. Look at that. 
So originally, we would planned on sleeping down in the gorge, but when we were on the cliff on the other side, I noticed like a kind of takeoff spot for a paragliding. So we whipped out the old Google Earth, had a look, saw that there was a road that led to the top and said, well, what's, what's the worst thing that can happen? We go up there and can't camp and we come back down here. So we went up, had a look, and this is what we found. First night t camping in France. Uh, yeah, not too shabby. No. We gotta look at each other in the eyes. Mm. Mm, the metal tannins. Oh, the metal tannins. <laughs> so look at that. Like, can you? We definitely were not going back down to the bottom. 13, 11 on the meterage. That's it. Obviously, we had a very good night. Otherwise, we wouldn't have made it to post production. And that's it, took her down around 11 o'clock. This is about 10.30 at night, so you can see absolutely stunning all night long, baby. Now a message for our affiliate link. Do you find the three batteries for your DJI Maverick Air is not enough? Buy this Chinese adapter from Amazon and you'll be able to charge batteries in no time. Find the link down in the bottom so we can get a small commission on your next purchase. Back to you Faustine. Fasting Surprise Tour had a stop at Les Demoiselles Coiffe, which was, pfft, look at those rocks floating in the air, Avatar style on the side. I always thought it was just wine, but yeah, I didn't realize it was a real place. And uh, yeah, Fasting had to stop there in the morning, and pfft, that's, this is what we saw. All right, that's enough, we get it. How is your breakfast? Pretty nice view, eh? Too bad, I don't know. Is, can you call it breakfast still when it's at 11? I don't know. Do you have to call it brunch? Is it like a mandatory, you gotta call uh, it brunch? I don't know. Maybe it's What's just... the etiquette of of breakfast time? But it is, you know, to answer your question, it is a very good breakfast. I got some homemade palmier with yeah. sugar. 98% vegan. They're not quite vegan. I got peanut butter now in my titties. So I'm talking to... about view more. Oh! Who this, cares about what you're eating? I mean, we're just gonna watch a whole bunch of fucking geology boners, yeah? You got geologists to come here and just fucking give her, yeah? But it's still pretty nice. You don't have to be a geologist to get a hard on for these, these stalag. I don't know what they're called. I'm not gonna even give it a term because I'm gonna get corrected in the comments. Les demoiselles coiffées. No, I know that, but I know it's not a stalagmite. Maybe it's called like a, a mountain boner. 
the mountain boners of of the Alps. Okay, we got a new term now yeah. by Mike Walkman. Look at the heads on them, yeah? I know. Some have a, a tiny head and a, and a fat tapering shaft. Others, not so much. Some are girthy with veins. Some got little warty spots on them. Yeah. Yo, we're going on the light speed. Oh! Yo, what's going? Yo, we're going to heaven together, Faustin. Uh, yo, I do not know how they deviated all that water so they could put all those stones there, but like, eat your heart out, beavers, because y'all motherfuckers don't know how to make no dance compared to these guys. Look, empty parking lot. Nobody's here but us, and then you have this. I'm looking at real snow that's not in a freezer with my own two eyes. You know the name of that mountain is? Neither do I. And here's us. With all our Amazon affiliate products, you can check those out down in the link. The nice tarp. We got the sleeping bags, everything. Grandma's car. So we made it to the Pac des Ecrans. This is, uh, this is where Faustine brought me for her surprise. I thought she was gonna bring us to, to the Verdun or something else a little bit more to the south. I've been talking about coming to these mountains for years. I'm absolutely not disappointed. Look at these these incredible peaks and valleys here. So this is where we spent the rest of our trip. We camped at the home camper for a few nights and just hung around here and you can see why this is this is the place Faustin chose to bring me. Day three, and it was off to hike above the tree line in the Parc des Écrans. We woke up early in the morning, got our asses out of bed, and off we went.
2,186 meters American, which roughly 2,186 meters Canadian, which is internationally recognized as 2,186 meters European. There's a lot of bees around here. Yeah, there's a big beehive. The perfect pit spot for our lunch. It'll make you want to shake your money maker. So you see Faustian doing here. And yeah, just overall, really cool place. You got people coming up here to paraglide. We saw this guy hike up, set his gear up in two minutes, and off he went. I don't know, man. I, I'd be shit my pants doing that. Lots of birds flying around. And just overall, epic views looking back into the heart of the Parc des Écrins. You got the clouds coming overhead. So there's another guy set his thing up. He had a little bit of a different set up and yeah just watching the clouds roll around you being above them just an absolute beautiful place um, to check out the views Mike had a little bit of a difficulty concentrating, driving, as you can see. Yeah, he keep on turning the, his head to have a look at the fucking view, because that's a view. The guy behind me. Voilà. So I quickly googled this area and it turns out that Alcière is ranked like number 37 in the country for ski hills. Like it doesn't even make the top 10. <laughs> Top 10s don't mean anything anyways, it's kind of like getting a participation trophy at a seniors bowling tournament. So anyways, just enjoy these nice villages and we can pretend like it's in the top 10 ski hills in France. So this is well inside the Parc des Écrans. The road doesn't go any farther than this. You got the village of Prat Peak all the way at the end, and then to each side, the valley splits into two more, where you got some epic places to go hiking, to go wild camping. So really, really, really um, where you want to be when you come here. We took one good look, said, nah, there's not enough time to do this today. So we went back home and saved that for the next day, and we're gonna show you exactly what Faustine's uh, little surprise for our campsite. This was one of Faustine's surprises for this trip as she booked everything and didn't tell me anything about it. Pooping in a chef's pot. Now I can't say that I've ever pooped in a chef's pot before but I can say that it is rather delightful. So I'm not, I'm not even getting to how that works. But let's have a look, yeah? She found this place, so basically, because we gotta charge all of our batteries, uh, make sure that we got all the electricity we need for our devices, she took a place where, you know, they let you camp on their property, and basically, yeah, this is nice, I guess, I don't know, I don't know, hippies? I don't know if that's the, if that's the correct term, if that's politically correct, call it whatever you want, it, it's absolutely amazing, yeah? They got, they got a greenhouse over here, look at that. I think they're more like artists, yeah? So, you look over here. You got one of these things. You ever played one of these before? Watch. How do you play this? You take a flip flap. That's it. The 
only thing we're missing is the Blue Man Group. Yeah, they got these yurts. So in this area, they get lots and lots and lots of snow in the winter. As you can see already, there's lots of mountains around. So they got these yurts. Check that out. I hope the camera's gonna. Yeah, there we go. Look at that. All insulated. So when it's nice and warm in the winter. So, sorry, when it's nice and cold in the winter, you got that. More gardens, teepees. The, the nights that these guys probably had here, yeah, like, look at all this stuff that they got hanging around. Look at that. What happened that night, when they decided, that afternoon, when they decided to take whatever and get, go to the moon and then build this. Look at that. It's got like a tractor chair. You can just imagine the guy in there conducting a bunch of high people singing songs and whatnot. Yeah, it's pretty nice. And here's us. Oh, the yard's too long. Gotta cut the grass. Fuck off. Don't need to cut the grass. Let it grow. The bugs like that. Gives a place for the mice to hide. That way they don't go in your house. So yeah, these guys just, just tell you to make yourself at home. Use your stuff. You pay them a little fee. Spend the night. And then, uh, yeah. That's it. Nobody's even here. Hang out, chilling. This is like the ultimate. Well, not the ultimate. This is how things used to be done. Yeah, we used to hang out. Have things now. He's got smartphones and doodads and IKEA and whatnot. Look at that bars and whatnot. I'm gonna take you upstairs because uh, I'm supposed to go there. Nice kitchen for us to use. We got a shower. Don't open it. I'm naked. Uh oh. Nobody wants to see that. It's not Day four in the Parc des Écrans. It was certainly not our intention to save the best for last, but it turns out that we likely did. If you come to France, you gotta try to make your way over to the Alps. It really is, you know, nowhere better in terms of mountains in this country, even in this continent. I mean, have a look. It is a place not to be missed. Since we were so concentrated on making this video and soaking in the beauty of the Parc des Écrans, we didn't really have any Einstonian conversations, so the A-roll is a little bit at a minimum. You're doing it, Faustine! You're doing it! Yeah, you too. Congrats, oh. fat fuck. <laughs> All right, let's fucking do this. Oh, I hate cold water. Oh, it's a cold one. That glacier's in town now. Fuck. Fucking hell, yo. It's as cold as Donald Trump's heart. Oh. Oh.
for it. Yeah, I am going to fucking... So close to it. Here you go. Here you go. Here you go. Snow! Snow, snow, snow. I made it in snow. Snow, snow. I would have felt really bad with myself if I didn't do that. So, I did it. We did it. Well, that's it, folks, for the first episode of Traveling Around France. If you like this video, share it 10 times a day on Facebook. Make sure you do all that stuff at the bottom. Buy your grandma lots of Planet Lens gear for Christmas. She'll love it. Until round two, let's go! Ha 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 ha!